I'm still in the book of Revelation and the word today is don't compromise. Don't compromise. The reason a lot of us do not see the glory of the Lord is because we have compromised our beliefs and our convictions for the sake of popularity, money, sexual gratification, personal gains, and the list goes on. But the word today to you is do not compromise your convictions. Stand for your convictions. Even though we as believers cannot and should not totally shun the presence of unbelievers or sinners, yet we have an obligation to stand up for the truth. Sin is a big deal and don't make light of it. Sin is sin and it's a big deal before God. My text today is taken from uh, Revelations chapter two. Revelation chapter two. I'm reading from verses twelve to seventeen. This is the word of the Lord. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, write: These things says he who has the sharp two-edged sword. I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith, even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Thus, you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. 16. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Verse 17. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church, to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. The Lord gave a message to the church in Pergamos. And you know what? We need to commend this church for certain things. Here is what it says again, verse 12. It says, this thing says you who has the sharp two-edged sword. I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. Hmm. What does it mean, where Satan's throne is? Well, you know what? The Bible doesn't really explain that to us. But we know that the city of Pergamos was a city that was given to idolatry. It was a city that was controlled by Satan. A lot of wickedness was happening in that city. So maybe this is what the, the word of God means by saying, I know where you, uh, you dwell, where Satan's throne is. In other words, the wickedness around them. This is where the believers were dwelling, sin, wickedness all around them, and yet they did not have to compromise. It says, and you hold fast to my name, even though the, the city of Pergamos was a city that was given to idolatry. It was a city full of very much influenced by Satan, yet they held fast unto the name of the Lord. They did not give up on the name of the Lord. They were not ashamed to be called Christians. Now, one of the great essential elements in the Christian religion is our faith. And this church was commended for not giving up their faith. Even when one of theirs, which is Antipas, was martyred, was killed, they still did not give up the faith, even when they had sin all around them. Saints of God, it's not easy to live in a sinful world. It's not easy to live at a workplace where people around you do not believe in God. They don't hold on to your faith. There's cursing around you. There is sin around you. There is theft around you. All kinds of wickedness going around you. And you have to shine in the midst of all of that. It's not easy. It only takes the grace of God to make you stand out as a believer in this sinful world. So here, God was commending the Pergamians um, from the city of Pergamos for holding on to the faith in spite of the fact that they dwell in a city that has the throne of Satan. 
He says, and you hold fast to my name and did not deny the faith, even in the days in which Antipas, my faithful, was martyred. We need to commend this church because it wasn't easy shining in the midst of darkness, but they held unto the Lord. They did. They were, as I said, they were not afraid to be called Christians. Most of us today are shy to be known as Christians. We don't want people to know that we're Christians. We want to hide. But these people were not afraid to be called Christians. They held on to their faith. And yet, verse 14, the Lord said, But I have a few things against you, because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam. What is the doctrine of Balaam? He said, you have amongst you those who hold on to the doctrine of Balaam, those who believe the doctrine of Balaam, those who thought Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel and to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Verse 15, thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which things I hate. What is the doctrine of Balaam? And what is the doctrine of the Nicolaitans? Well, the doctrine of Balaam, it's an attitude that says that you can fully cooperate with the worldly standard and still be a Christian. You can fully submit to the world system, live by the world system and still serve God. No, 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 child of God, you cannot do that. You cannot fully live by the worldly system and also serve God. No, you cannot serve God in Mormon. In John chapter 17, Jesus was praying for his disciples, John 17 and verse 14. And he said, I have given them your word and the world have hated them because they are not of this world. And Jesus prayed. He said, do not take them out of this world. But I'm, I'm telling you, they are not of this world. That is why the world has hated them. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. Our government is different. Our kingdom is a different kingdom. Our principles are different. We cannot submit to the standards of the world and still serve God. No. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16, God said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven child of God, you cannot compromise. You cannot compromise. Again, what is the teaching of Balaam? The teaching of Balaam teaches Christians to compromise. It teaches Christians to compromise to the worldly standard. We have been called to be separate. When you look at Leviticus chapter 20, let's look at Leviticus. I'm taking you again to um, the book of Leviticus. Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 20. And verse 26, what did he say? Let's look at it. Levitico, Levi, sorry, Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 26. Here is what he says. And you shall be holy to me for I, the Lord, am holy and have separated you from the peoples that you should be mine. The teaching of Balaam teaches Christians to compromise and to forget that they have been called to be holy. We have been called to be holy. What does it mean to be holy? I mean, when people hear the word holiness, sometimes they shy away. The word holiness simply means we've been set apart. You've been set apart for God's purposes. You have been called to be holy. Hallelujah. You've been set apart for the purposes of God, for God to use you. Again, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 16 says the same thing. Let's go back to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 16. Let's see what Peter was saying to the believers then. Peter said to the believers, he said, Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. The teaching of Balaam teaches us to compromise to the worldly standard. Teaches us to forget that we have been separated from the world and we've been called to be holy. It teaches that a little sin doesn't matter. Saints of God. Children of God, a little sin matters to God because God has called you to be separate from the rest of the world. Do not compromise. We are tempted to compromise, especially when there are some financial benefits or personal gains for us. That is where we are tempted to compromise. But 
God is speaking to you. God is reminding you, do not compromise. God was also uh, against the fact that there were some of the believers in Pergamos who held on to the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans it teaches, you know, the believers that it was lawful to commit for fornication. It was lawful to eat things offered to idols. When the apostles taught them not to do this thing, where do we see that? Let's see that in the book of Acts chapter 15. Please come with me to the book of Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15 and verse 20. Here is what it says. It says, yes. Acts chapter 15 and verse 20. It says, But that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from blood. The Nicolaitans were teaching the believers that it's okay to eat things that were strangled, things that were offered to idols. It's okay to commit sexual immorality. But that was not what the apostles taught the believers. So these were the beliefs also of the Nicolaitans, which God hated. And there were some in Pergamos who were holding on to these teachings. This day, the Lord is reminding you and I not to compromise. There are many things that will come your way that will tempt you to compromise. Again, when there are personal gains in it, sometimes we tend to, we're tempted to compromise because there are personal gains, there are financial gains, so we're tempted to compromise. We compromise, you know, sometimes it's to be accepted by people, to fit in. But God is saying to you and I, do not compromise. That is what he said to the Nicolaitans. Sorry, that is what he said to um, the church in Pergamos. Again, even though they held on to their faith in spite of living in the kingdom of Satan, I mean, so to say, where they were living at a place where the throne of Satan was, it wasn't easy to be a Christian. It wasn't easy to stand out and be a light in a dark world. They held on to their faith, and yet there were things against them. They held on to the teachings of Balaam. It's the attitude. The teachings of Balaam, again, is the attitude that says, I can be a Christian and still live like a, the world. You cannot eat your cake and have it. You are called to be holy. Today, God is reminding you, you are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, the people called out of darkness into his marvelous light, and we have to live like such people. Child of God, do not compromise your faith. Some of you listening today, I know you are at a place where you are between the rock and the hard place. You are tempted to compromise because it will bring you some personal gains. You are tempted to compromise because you don't want to lose your job. You're tempted to compromise because you don't want to lose your relationship. You're tempted to compromise because you don't want to seen as the odd one. You don't want to be seen as a Christian. But the word of the Lord today, the word of the Lord to you today is do not compromise. Do not compromise. You are a special person. You are a holy nation. You are a priest of God. Don't compromise. That was the message that God was giving to the church in Pergamos. They were compromising. They were following teachings that were not of God. They wanted to live like the world, and they also wanted to live as believers. Today, God is calling you to a place of holiness. He says, be ye holy. For I am holy. Be separated from the things that are pulling you into the world. Yes, it's not easy. It's a challenge. I'm not saying it's easy to live in this world where there is sin all around you. That is what God said to the Pergamians, the people in Pergamos. He said, you live at a place where Satan's throne is. We live in a place where Satan is controlling government, Satan is controlling people, Satan is controlling managers, supervisors, husbands and wives. This is what we have to put up with. But in spite of that, God is calling us to a place of holiness, a place of purity. Don't give up your standard. Don't give up your convictions because of people around you. Do not compromise. God is calling you to a life of purity, a life of holiness. You can do it.
You know why? Because you're not going to do it in your strength. God is with you. God will enable you. God will bring you through. Hallelujah. He that call it thee is faithful and will also do it. The message is simple. Don't compromise. You are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a people called out of darkness into his marvelous light. God is calling you to live a life of purity, a life of holiness. God was against the Nicolaitans. God was against the, the Nicolaitans as well. He didn't like what they were teaching. God was against those who were holding on to the doctrine of Balaam. He says, Balaam who taught Balak to put a stamping block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Saints of God, sexual immorality is a sin before God and it will remain a sin. I want to encourage you, those who have children, children who are at the age of, you know, getting married, children who are getting up there, teach your children to abstain from sex. Teach your children to keep themselves pure. It is doable. It is doable with the strength of God. Teach your children to keep themselves pure and holy until the day they meet God's spouse for them and they are married. Then they can get into that. But in the meantime, I encourage you to teach your children, your daughters and your sons to abstain from sexual immorality. It is a sin. Sin is a big deal. Let us not make light of it. Again, the word to you and I today is do not compromise. Even though you're tempted to compromise, even though there are gains for you in it. Oh gosh, you're looking at this deal. And if you were to compromise, it will bring you a lot of personal gain, a lot of money. But yet God is saying to you, do not compromise your convictions and your standards. Look to God. He will make a way for you where there seems to be no way. Do not compromise your beliefs and your convictions. Shalom.